So can high school students actually build, cut, and stand a timber frame all in one semester? Well, stay tuned in the video to find out, and maybe you'll get a glimpse of what it's like in the eyes of a high school woodshop teacher. Welcome to the Rail Splitter Woodshop. And you can see here my students, uh, we just got our timbers in for this is last year's project and we're processing them with a 12 inch planer, cutting some mortises with our chainsaw mortiser. And then we're also using hand tools, using these slicks and chisels and squares for different layout. So you can see here, uh, students are working on different layout parts and, and cutting out material, scoring chisel lines, cutting chisel lines here with the chisel. I have several different types of tools that we use. And here you can see our students are fitting together the timbers and that starts to be a pretty good feeling when they start to see what they're actually doing and how what was kind of neat during this process is one student would be working on a post and another student might be working on an e-brace separately and they would cut them together and then when they would fit them together they would see them come together and start to make what it is we were making it was a pretty neat process to watch so one of the most important things that i found during this process is that it is so important to just get tools in their hands and get the material out in front of them and then leave them alone. And in this day and age when we have a lot of people complain about younger students and high school students and high schools aren't doing the job that we need schools to be doing. And I watched what we did here where not only it took a couple of different classes to build a pavilion, that would be standing in their community for a long, long time. But it was neat to watch them go through and use these different tools, hand tools, power tools. They would make mistakes. And the most important thing is that when students would walk in the door into my class, they weren't uh, waiting for me. They weren't waiting to be told what to do. Most of them, once they kind of, kind of got into a groove, they just wanted to get into the room and then start working. Many times they would have a hand tool in their hand before the, the bell even rang to be in class. And I always take that as a good sign. Students want to be there, they want to be learning. And when they find a class that, that can help direct them and get tools in their hands, here we are using a small hatchet in a high school woodshop class. And these things are important. Did they make mistakes? Yep, we made a lot of mistakes. One of the most important lessons I think we got from this is that mistakes are going to happen. The difference is how do you react to it? My dad always used to tell me that every good woodworker makes mistakes. It's just the good ones know how to fix them and how to problem solve. And in a world where we've seen to try and take a lot of the problem solving skills away from our students, it's important to put a tool in their hand and get material out in front of them, let them make their mistakes and then get out of their way and let them, let them problem solve, let them work through their failures because that's how they're gonna learn. They don't want to be told what to do. They want to work their way through their problems. This was one of my favorite shots that I kind of, as I was going back through my videos and looking, uh, I just thought it was kind of neat to see those students working all on that one beam together, different parts, and just their heads down. They're not using their phones. They're just working. So you can see here, uh, we do have a shaper origin that we use at school. Uh, shout out to my buddy, Sean Kirsch, who's helped me really uh, 
understand how to, how we can incorporate this tool into our wood shop. So here, one of my students is cutting out the lettering uh, rail splitter wood shop in the front beam that is going to be facing uh, the main road, and then we're going to end up using green epoxy into it. But this is such a cool tool. Uh, the Shaper Origin is it's a really neat tool, and students really like using it, and they've been able to uh, really kind of grasp it. Here you can see we're using uh, sure epoxy you know from Total Boat. Huge shout out to Total Boat as they've uh, sent us epoxy to use in our wood shop. And um, to Kristen and everybody else, Mike out there, uh, just awesome people at Total Boat. They have supported our wood shop so much. And um, I've just been very thankful for what they've done and other people, the whole company out there. Um, the students really enjoy working with the epoxy. And, so it was neat to use both uh, the Shaper Origin and Epoxy, two things that you may not be able to see how they tie into timber framing. And it was pretty neat to see how uh, we were able to incorporate these two things. And you can see here, uh, actually, I'll give a shout out to Jess Crow as well. Jess helped me um, figure out what the best way, the process to pour this into our lettering. We actually did this at one of the pavilions that we did out at Maker Camp a couple years ago, and Jess was a part of that. And I actually poured a very thin first primary layer, you can see it there, of just clear epoxy to help seal the bottom of the letters. And then we mixed in our green resin and poured se separately on top. And we got a really nice finish and the letters turned out, they just sealed up so well because they didn't run, um, which was Jess's suggestion to prevent them from running was to put that, that base layer of epoxy down. So the students really got into this. This is actually my drafting class working here. And they designed this lettering. So the font is actually called National Park. It's one of my favorites. And it is through the Shaper Origin uh, software. Yeah. But these students here, they designed this lettering that was going to go into this front beam, and then we laid it out, and then cut. I had them cut it out using the Shaper. You can see the the lettering really turned out good. I love that font. So here we're using Heritage Natural Finish to seal the timbers up. This is an exterior finish and we, we use a wax on the end grain and then we oil everything else and it gives it a really pretty finish. So once you get those timbers sanded down to a nice consistent um, grit and bring that oil over the top of it, it just really enriched the color and looked really good with that green epoxy. And so here's raising day. Raising day was, it was hot. I think it hit like 98 degrees that day and it was like the first hot day of spring. Uh, they had been nice and cool and um, so we had to keep water on the students and it was, we were trying to make sure they didn't get overheated. But you can yeah. see here, we got our first bent up. And the funny thing about this process is that as students were working, um, when we got that first bent up, it took us a while. But after that first one went up, they took over on their own. And they, once they could see it and visualize it, they jumped on this thing so fast. And we actually raised this in about six hours. So it was just me and about 12 or 14 high school students and um, this was it was really a neat process you can see the post brackets down in the corner those were actually made by our metal shop so mr acres our metal shop teacher uh, they just took uh, pieces of quarter inch steel welded them together and we kind of similarly made them to where they would be redheaded into the concrete and then there was a we had a flat bracket that sat on the nuts to help keep it for those posts to just sit flat. So they had something flat to sit into. Here we're raising the rafters and just handing them up. 
we had pre-cut the bird's mouth, so all we had to do was cut them for length and drop them in. We do have that Arunda dovetail system. So this was the part of the day where the students were kind of getting tired because it was it was so hot out. Um, but they just did such a great job working through this this day. And I think they once we started getting the frame up, they started to see what this was going to look like, and they got really excited. So this is where we're starting to feel pretty good about ourselves. And this picture right here is the one that it really made me proud. Um, that picture of all of us sta standing in front of it um, was kind of something that I envisioned from the beginning. I'm going to say it here in a minute in the video, but I just want to give one last shout out to Rob Hughes. Rob Hughes is a good uh, teaching friend of mine who he does timber framing as well. And Rob, I couldn't have done this without you. So much respect. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, maybe got a glimpse to see what it's like being a high school woodshop teacher and some of the challenges that we face. I hope maybe it restored a little bit of your faith that high schools and education are doing some things well. And maybe we are preparing students for the next generation and for the next group of workers and for the next people that are going to inspire and keep things moving along. So I hope you enjoyed the video and this was quite a challenge. Uh, I've got a huge shout out to my friend Rob Hughes who honestly without Rob I don't think I could have done this as a shop teacher and Rob gave me a ton of confidence in our ability to be able to pull this one off and I hope it helped restore maybe some faith in the educational system and that we are doing some things correct. So here's to the next one because we've already started on our new frame and I've got more plans to do even bigger and better things. And I know that there's other people just like me and there's other shop teachers out there doing stuff similar to this. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. Um, um, I couldn't even see the bottle. Um, Baba, when he start talking hard. Oh, I'll bet. But one snap, I screen off. Oh. So I still got hey, it. Hey, it's up on the rocks. Okay. Really? Things are wrong. You know, it, it, it's so a wonder catfish that day just didn't pull you in the lake and take off with you. The other one um, was um, on the ground.